What up, peeps? Kevin Given back with you for another program of Don't Make Me Watch That. This week, I'm going to review the final Hammer Dracula movie that starred Christopher Lee. Satanic Rites of Dracula. Before we begin, I want to ask that if you like what you see and love comic books as well as pop culture, you're going to subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to stay informed and let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Who's your favorite Dracula? What is your favorite Dracula movie? Maybe you love this movie. There's a lot in this movie to like. What is your favorite non-Dracula vampire movie? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I review comics and write columns for two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. Check out those sites, let me know what you think, comment on my reviews, and on my columns. I also have my own franchises, Carl Vincent, Vampire Hunter, and Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi, available on Amazon. Check the links below for more information. I also have a book that's a collection of my writings and reviews called Comics, Pop Culture, and Politics. You can look inside this and my other book on Amazon. You can find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again. Check the links below for Carl Vincent merchandise and the trade paperback, Dracula Rising. Beautiful artwork from my main artist, Rodolfo Ezequiel. We're working on a spinoff for Knoichi Kate Bryant, but we're going to discuss that later on. Right now... On with the show, this is it. I must say that this isn't the worst entry in the Dracula franchise, despite what the critics say. So why am I reviewing this one? <laughs> That's easy. It's the only Christopher Lee Dracula movie in public domain. I don't think the editors will uh, make cuts to this video the way they did my first one, which I put out last week. Ugh. Instead of being set in the olden days, this takes place in the groovy 70s which to us today, of course, are the olden days. But when it was made, it was the present day. One thing to keep in mind when watching this film is that Hammer Films at the time was on its last legs. They were about to go under. Their box office receipts, especially in the U.S., were way down, and the company had made many cuts just to stay afloat. They were running on a skeleton crew, which is why the production values were lower on this film than on previous Hammer films. Hammer decided on setting Dracula in the present day due to the popularity of such films as Blackula and the Count Yorga movies. I'm Count Yorga. Oh. Please. An old Bulgarian cure. So, beginning with Dracula AD 1972, the series is set in the present day. Day. Now, it's no secret that Christopher Lee became increasingly disillusioned with the franchise with each passing film. Stop it! But he would reprise the role anyway. Until this film, it was the last time he would portray Dracula. Oh, come on, sweetheart. No. Well, for Hammer films, anyway. I feel that most critics are too harsh on this film. I hated, hated, hated this movie. It is far from being the worst in the series, and both Cushing and Lee are spot on in their performances. We are the best. Even if Lee is only in the film for a half an hour, it's still an incredible half hour. It does drag in the middle, and a big letdown is the absence of Terence Fisher, arguably the best director that was employed by Hammer. Alan Gibson takes the reins here, a competent but not special director of horror films. The film opens with a satanic ritual. We have reason to believe that the followers of Morgala are going to perform a ritual this evening, which will raise an evil more terrible than you can imagine. Which includes gratuitous nudity. I suppose that was an attempt to increase the box office. Now what is the one thing, if you put it in a movie, it'll be successful? Tits. One of the things that critics didn't like was that this seemed to be a mix of genres. It can't decide if it's an upright horror film, action, or spy espionage. The opening scene features a daring escape from a satanic cult. 
Incidentally, the ritual scenes in this film were highly praised by various witch cults around the country. They are well done scenes and apparently quite authentic. Come on, you're a little impressed. We get some decent stunt work and action scenes, but the pacing is uneven. The plot revolves around Dracula using a group of modern scientists attempting to unleash a new version of the plague onto the world. There are things in the dark. Dark things. Van Helsing's granddaughter, here played by Joanna Lumley, replacing Stephanie Beecham, <laughs> who played her in Dracula A.D. 1972, is in great peril as a vampire bites her and Dracula wants to use her in the satanic ritual. The original title of this film was going to be Dracula is Dead and Well and Living in London. No! God, please, no! No! Thankfully, Christopher Lee said he wouldn't do the film if that was the title. I mean, it sounds like a parody of vampire films, or at least a comedy, and this wasn't a comedy, it was a very serious drama horror piece. As with most Hammer vampire films, there's plenty of lesbian undertones. Actually, this one is kind of obvious as the lesbian vampires attack Jessica Van Helsing. <laughs> One of Van Helsing's secret weapons is a silver bullet. Are we confusing legends here? Isn't it a werewolf that has a silver bullet for a weakness? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We spend a good chunk of time watching Van Helsing create the bullet, only to watch him screw up and miss. Maybe next time create more than one bullet? Oh no. The film is all over the place and isn't quite sure what it wants to be. Are you stoned, Jeffrey? Did you sneak a joint out of my purse? Here the critics are right, and it's trying to appeal to so many people that it doesn't really find an audience. But towards the end of the film is when it shines. In most of the final Dracula films, Christopher Lee declined to speak his lines because they were so badly written. So the Count is mute. I do not say blah, blah, blah. But here, in his final appearance, he actually shines. It may be a long time before we get to these two top British thespians. Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, but when we do, it's cinematic gold. Like every great artist, I want to create an indisputable masterpiece once in my lifetime. I call upon you to witness my supreme trial. has spread over centuries and has just begun! I gotta give this one two and a half stars just for the actors. It's not the best in the Hammer Dracula series, but it's far from being the worst. I'm Kevin Given, and this has been Don't Make Me Watch That!
So if you like the show and you like what you see, if you love comics and pop culture as well as I do, you're going to subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to stay informed and let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Who's your favorite Dracula? What is your favorite Dracula movie? Maybe you love this movie. What is your favorite non-Dracula vampire movie? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I review comics and write columns for two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. Check out those sites and let me know what you think. I also have my own franchises, Carl Vincent, Vampire Hunter, and Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi. Both available on Amazon. Check the links below for more information. I also have a book that's a collection of my writings and reviews called Comics, Pop Culture, and Politics. You can look inside this and my other book on Amazon. You can find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for Carl Vincent merchandise and the trade paperback, Dracula Rising. Beautiful artwork from my main artist, Rodolfo Ezequiel. We're working on a spin-off for Kunoichi, Kate Bryant, but we'll discuss that later. Right now, I'd like to thank you for joining me here on Don't Make Me Watch That! I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Stay tuned. Another broadcast is coming soon. Until then, this is Kevin Given saying, have a good day, keep reading comics, and keep watching those pop culture icons.